Hey there, this is Viv with Art with Viv, and today I'm going to walk you step by step how I did my latest pet portrait commission. Let's go, guys! start my pet portraits with the eyes and in this case this dog has some gorgeous gorgeous brown eyes and they match his fur almost so it, it just is a beautiful beautiful combination of colors together they are very harmonious and I love it so I've put this beautiful kind of golden brown down for the base color of his eyes and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of a darker brown where the shadows are while it's still wet just to let those eyes blend together. Um, usually I would take some masking fluid and mask out the white part or the highlights of his eyes, but I didn't do this because I'm just gonna come back with some white gouache at the end and go ahead and put those highlights in when I finish. But I've got his eyes started and so then I start layering up his fur, starting with the lightest, palest brown first and then just starting to add the darker shades in the shadow areas. Um, it's really smooth. I'm not trying to do a lot of detail on this, this particular um, pet portrait. I want it to be kind of chunky so that it looks like the light, you know, the play of shadow and light is really what I'm after on this pet portrait and how they contrast and sort of meld together to make this beautiful dog. So. That's what I work on first. I get those lighter areas in, and then while the lighter areas are still wet, I start adding in some of the shadows and get those sh shadows marked out where I want them and where, well, where they should be according to the reference photo.
working on these layers and as they dry I keep adding more layer of color to deepen that area if it's a darker area leaving the lights pale and I want to come back up here and work on his eyes some more so I've got a dark dark brown um, and I'm outlining or not really outlining but I'm putting in the shadow of his upper eyelid and in the corner of his eye just trying to get those shadows just right and it also is starting to define the eye more bring it out and make it look more three-dimensional getting those shadows in there also right in the center or sort of near the center where the pupil is I'm adding a little bit of that dark dark brown um, you could probably use a sepia for that if you don't have a really dark burnt umber or you can mix your own black with um, some indigo blue some alizarin crimson that makes a really good black mixture or indigo blue and burnt umber make a really nice dark I call it black but it's a really dark mixture so then I just continue with my layers of course going from lighter to darker and really observing the reference photo so that I'll know you know where the lights and darks are and just map those out right now it is looking a little chunky and disconnected but it's okay at the end we'll unify it so when you're painting your paintings when you're painting your paintings hmm when you are painting make sure that you're really paying a lot of attention to your reference photo look at your reference photo more than you actually look at your painting observe that careful observe observation of your reference photo is what will help you make a more accurate painting in the end so just continue I've just continued uh, doing my pale washes in the lighter areas and continue building those up through both adding some darker paint while it is still wet and letting those layers dry and then coming in with more layers to darken some areas so you can use both methods that wet on wet technique where you get the paper wet with either paint or water and add more paint to darken it up or you can just let it dry and then add another layer of paint to darken that area so just watch watch and learn or maybe not learn just watch and have fun that'd be good
colors and the sections of color down pretty well. Still looking a little bit disconnected, a little bit chunky, but that's okay. Again, we will unify it or I will unify it at the end. And I'm just getting in some of those darker shadow areas. And the good part about doing this, whenever you're painting, and you want to stop every once in a while so that you can look at your painting and sort of compare the values. And a value is just how light or dark an area is. Compare those values to see if you need to uh, darken any more areas or possibly lighten an area. Now, if you need to lighten an area, you would, e you would have to, if it's already dry paint, you would obviously have to sort of scrub it, wet it, scrub it with a hog bristle brush just a little bit, and then uh, dab that with a paper towel to absorb any of that excess paint that you've scrubbed up and that will lighten the area. But that's why it's best to go from light to dark and go slow, compare your tones so that you don't have to come back and scrub your watercolor paper to lift up some of that paint. Although it's perfectly acceptable to do that, it's just, you know, you risk the chance of ruining your paper when you do that or making a rough spot that looks ugly in your paper. So it's best to work from light to dark, go slowly, compare your values as you go so that you don't have to make too many adjustments to the lighter values and you can just keep adjusting the darker values by adding more paint. So that's where I've, um, I've gotten there and I'm just really getting in those shadows. I'm enjoying this painting. I love this dog. It's a pretty dog. I'm doing this for a lady whose best friend, this is actually her best friend's dog and it um, or maybe it's her mother's dog. I think it's her mother's dog and the, and the dog passed away. So it's sort of a, a tribute to it. And that's the thing about art. You can sort of memorialize or a pet or something, an important event, a port, an important person. Art is just such an amazing tool for our memories and for our emotions to help just sort of capture them, boost them up, and keep them fresh. Now I am working on his nose and I've got some uh, pale gray mixed up. Actually I've got a darker sort of grayish brown color and I'm just adding water to make it paler, to make it waterier. Just paying attention to his nostrils, the darkness of those, the shapes of the highlights and the shadows on his nose and just trying to accurately paint those in as I see them on the uh, reference photo. And dog noses, once you get the hang of them, they are very easy, but they are a big part of the dog's face, just like his eyes. Their nose print is unique, just like our fingerprints are. So you want to try to get them as accurate as possible. And here I'm just adding a few or a, a, a lighter sort of brown layer over that gray because just like his eyes match his fur, his nose has sort of that brown coloring of his fur. So I'm trying to get that in there so you can see it painting right over that pale gray that we started with. And again, just paying attention to where the shadows and the highlights are, the shapes of those shadows and highlights, and how light or dark they are. That's the important thing. If you get those right, then you'll have a pretty accurate painting. So I'm going to continue to add shadows and add some details as I paint and get this puppy almost finished.
For the white fur under his chin and across his chest, I'm mixing up a really pale blue-gray. And what I mean by pale is it's really just really watery. That's how I've made it pale. Whenever you're working with watercolor to make a color lighter, you add more water usually. So it's really just a blue-gray that I've added a lot of water to. It's really watery mix. And I'm just sort of painting in the shapes of the shadows across his chest and under his chin getting that first layer in and then I'll come in with a little thicker mixture of that gray that blue gray a little bit thicker and add the details in the shadows the shadows in the shadows if you will <laughs> and as you see I've gotten the layers pretty much where they look consistent he looks blended there's still going to be a few more layers on the brown that he's going to need but once I get those in, he will be all pulled together. Also making sure that I put the shadows around his muzzle, under his nose, under his chin, getting those correctly. And Mr. Darcy in the background is cheering me on. You can hear him barking. He is liking this painting. So we have art critics all around us. So just con I'm just going to continue to add shadows and shapes and um, work on some more brown shadows to unify the top part of his head on that left side and he will be almost complete.
some some more shadows I'm also taking a little bit of PH Martin dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white and I'm adding the highlights to his eyes I'm also doing some fur marks right down the sides of his muzzle where that white stripe goes down his face just so that it's not a hard line so that it gives the indication of fur so there you have it this beautiful dog painted pretty quickly and I hope I gave you some really good tips. If you like art as much as I do, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and share this with a friend that likes art as much as we do. So I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.